Well, summer is over and we're finishing this last session that we have on the subject of how is your vineyard? In Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 6, there's a verse that again has intrigued me for years. It says, my brothers were angry with me. They forced me to care for their vineyards so I couldn't care for myself, my own vineyard. We've been talking the last few weeks about our own personal vineyard, vineyards. We can do a lot of things for other people, but if while we're doing things for others, we don't stop and take care of what God has given us to take care of, then we won't be able to help the world much. But as we care for our vineyard and as we ex inspect our own personal vineyards, we've seen four or five things. Number one, we've seen that our world is a perfect place for a vineyard. We are in the perfect situation, wherever we are, for God to do something special anywhere we are. Again, whether it's here, whether we're in Texas, whether we're in other parts of the world, let me tell you, it always seems like it's better somewhere else, but when you visit there, you realize, no, it's the same way everywhere. Perfect place for God to show up. Perfect place for God to show people that nothing in this world is going to meet their needs and satisfy them. A perfect place for God to do something that only God can do. That's where he has placed you and I. Wherever it is we find ourselves, that is the perfect place for you to show forth who God is. The second thing we talked about is that God the Father is the vine dresser. We started with the dirt, but then it takes someone to build the structure. It takes someone to manage. And as the song says, this is my father's world. I want you to know that nothing is happening. Not a single thing is happening that God doesn't know what's going on. Nothing is out of control for him. Nothing is catching him by surprise. He is still over all, and he is doing his work. I'm amazed as I read the Old Testament. God talks about things in terms of years that we don't get. For example, he says to Abraham, says, listen, I'm going to make a great nation. I'm going to take you from here, and I'm going to put you in another country, and there the nation is going to grow. The people where you are right now are really wicked, but they haven't gotten up to the top of their wickedness. But I'm going to build a big nation, and then I'm going to bring you back 400 years later. And we're going to clean up the mess they're making. I'm thinking, wow. Think about that. God, the vine dresser. Now, the beauty of the vine dresser is not only is he in control and knows what's happening, but the vine dresser wants things for our good. See, God the Father created this world, and he created us, and, and he took mankind, and he put them in the Garden of Eden. Perfect place. Everything you and I strive for is ultimately to get back to what we had in the Garden of Eden. And he has better plans for you and I than we have for ourselves. He has a better life for you and I than we could even imagine for ourselves. And that's what he has. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. It tells us in James, from the Father of lights. This is the vine dresser. Then on the third week, we saw that Jesus is the true vine. He is the true vine, and wherever the true vine is planted, it can grow, and it bears fruit. As many of you know, last Sunday I was down in Argentina, and I got to be there with, I, I was there 20-something years ago when the, we, we just kind of had church in the house, 
And, and, and as I was gathering with them now, and I'm in this rented facility with over 400 people, and people that I've seen come to the Lord, grow up, now are pastoring churches, and now this one church has six or seven daughter churches, and seeing all the things that God is doing. And let me tell you, some of those places are not what you would think, yay, yay, but God, wherever His Son is planted... He bears fruit. Some amazing things are happening. Jesus is the true vine. You and I can sing this morning, this we know. Why? Because Jesus is unfailing. He is unfailing. And Jesus is the true vine. Last week, Marcel spoke to us about we as the branches and talk to us that we, as branches, our life is to be simple. Simple. May I say, if you find yourself that your life is complicated, you're not doing something right. Why? Because life is supposed to be simple. The life of a branch is, is a simple life. The life of a branch is simply every day being focused on, attached to, remaining in, abiding in the vine. That's your job. That's your main thing. If you're doing that, then everything else God can do through you. But we have to remember simple, very simple, life of a branch is simple. Today, what we want to talk about is the following. We, as branches, are designed to bear fruit. We are designed to bear much fruit. We are to bear fruit. John chapter 15, verses 7 and 8 and 16, you have it there in your bulletin. And it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear, underline this, much fruit. So you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Underline that phrase. That you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. What is considered fruit? Now we have to be very careful here because when we talk about fruit... We can get sidetracked and forget. I've heard messages about fruit. I've heard specific messages where people say, this is fruit. But let me help you with something. Let me give you a definition that kind of opens it up for us. What is fruit? Fruit is whatever the vine dresser wants to give the world. Whatever the vine dresser wants to give the world, that's fruit. See, the vine dresser is the one who is doing all of this. And, and the purpose of it is that it bear fruit. And God knows exactly what is needed in every situation. But serious problems arise when we try to decide what is considered fruit and eliminate the rest. If we will simply go to the Lord and let him guide us, if we go to the vine dresser and say, okay, what is needed in this situation? He knows. Why? Because only he knows exactly the fruit that is needed for every situation. Have you ever walked into a situation and go, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here? Any of you have that? Guess what? He does. I don't know how many times I've walked into a hospital room and go, okay, what am I supposed to do now? What do they need now? 
Have you ever walked into a helpless situation and they're looking to you for help and you go, okay, here we are. Welcome to my life. And I think many times God puts us in those situations so that we will realize I don't have the answer, but he does. I remember as you're reading the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is asking his friends who've just come back from Jerusalem, say, hey, how's the, how's the homeland? And they say, it is a mess. Everything is destroyed. Everything is destroyed. Everything is, is a total wreck. And he cried and he prayed and he asked the Lord and it was such a burden on his heart that one day he's before the king and mind you when you're before the king you are not allowed to be unhappy and yet he was sad and the king says to him you don't look good what's wrong king could have easily said I don't like this guy's face let's cut it off but he didn't and he says, what's wrong? Imagine the position that Nehemiah is in. And yet, it says, and I prayed to the Lord quickly. In other words, Lord, tell me what I need to say right now. Obviously, he had given some thought, but, but he still went to the Lord. Tell me what I need to do right now. And as a result, the entire rest of the book is God doing what no one could imagine through him because he could bear fruit. Now, as we go through the Bible, we find biblical examples of fruit. For example, we find it in the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. How many of you were in vacation Bible school? Help me out. Okay, so let's do it. Ready? You're, you're going to help me. I get mixed up. I get to the woo-woo, and then I'm lost. Okay? That's going to come out on the recording, okay? Here we go. So I need you to help me. We're supposed to have love, joy, peace. Okay, forget it. Okay. You got to get that together before Friday night. I think we're going to need that. But we have the fruit of the Spirit. And you know, there is no situation at the end of the reading of the, of the gifts of the Spirit. Again, it says, against these, there is no law. What does that mean? I don't care what situation you're in. Love, joy, peace, patience kindness, all of these things are needed. Gentleness, self-control, those are fruit that you can always bring into the situation and no one will go, oh, that's just too much love around here. That's, we, we've just got too much peace. Just too patient. Have you ever been somewhere and your flight was delayed anybody been through a delay of flight you want to see a place where people start getting really bent out of shape it's when a flight is delayed because everybody has places to get now never mind start walking you won't get there forever just be patient but no no let me tell you something in any situation you find yourself you, as the branch, are supposed to give the fruit that is needed in that situation. Unfortunately, sometimes we're part of the problem, right? Other times, we can be the one that brings the fruit that God needs to bear in that situation. Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7, the entire Sermon on the Mount, is examples of what a life is when it is completely connected, satisfied, bearing fruit from the vine. 
so that in every situation, whatever it is, we are simply giving out what God wants us to give out. That is bearing fruit. You know that I am not someone who really gets into prophecy a lot. You, you understand that. Now, that doesn't mean personally I'm not looking for some things and kind of checking things out and what's going on and where the calendar is compared to... I just don't get up and preach all these things all the time. But one of the passages that I do focus in on a lot is this idea of how can we bear fruit and what should we be doing right now? How can we bear fruit? By doing and saying what Jesus wants us to do and say in each situation. How can we do that? Doing and saying. Not just sitting back and say, what would Jesus do? That sounds good. It's actually doing it. It's actually saying it. It's actually being Jesus in a particular situation. In 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. If you have your Bibles, please turn there. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 says, The end of the world is coming soon. Now, mind you, Peter wrote this 1,900 years ago. May I just say to you, it's sooner today than it was back then. It, it, we're, we are closer today than Peter was when he wrote this. He says, the end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. But most important of all, now stop. Russell, what should I do? Most important of all. Russell, the world seems to be falling apart. Most important of all. Russell, this world is crazy. Churches are crazy. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. Let me give you a little help in this church, with this number of people, with this group of people, we have the presence of a multitude of sin. You thought, I thought I was coming to a good church. Oh, you are. <laughs> it don't get much better than this. There are multitude of sins everywhere. In fact, just look around you. Look at the multitude of sins around you today. Don't point, but look, okay, so that you know who we're talking about. This is a multitude of sin. That is why we need to have deep, intense love one for another. Continues on. And it says, cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. When we see that we're at the end of the world, it's getting close. I don't know when the Lord is coming. I remember my dad preaching a message when I was about three years old. And he said, I don't believe I'm going to die before the Lord comes back. I never worried about dad dying because the Lord was coming back. I'm beginning to question at this stage of his life at 86, his theology. But, but it's there. And I said, okay, here it is. We are at the end. Here's the fruit that we need to see in our lives every day. 
Number one, the fruit of deep love. Deep love. Please don't go around and, and say things like, I love you in the Lord. That means I really don't like you, but God says I'm supposed to, so I love you in the Lord. That's a bunch of baloney. We are supposed to have deep love one for another. We are supposed to bear the fruit of hospitality and generosity. Listen, at the end of whatever is happening out in Texas right now, there are going to be opportunities for God's people to show hospitality, generosity, and deep love. There are going to be things that we can do from here that we can show deep love and hospitality and generosity to help them. These are the moments in, in, in our world where those who are followers of Christ can stand up, can be God's answer to the present situation, but we have to show the fruit. Remember the last big hurricane we had here? And I say big, and I mean, we all compare big to Andrew, but I'm talking, the last time our power went out for several days, how many of you remember that? What happened in our town? We all came out, out of our houses. Why? Because it was dark inside. We, we cooked our, our meals outside. We had our barbecues. We met neighbors we had only waved at. We, we, we got together. Someone had a, had, had a generator, and so they would plug it in, and they would bring a TV out, and everybody would sit around and watch their TV. They, they, everybody plug in their, their phone chargers for them. We had community till the power came on. What's the problem with South Florida FPNL? They turned the power back on. And then we all went back in our houses and we haven't had it since. Right? The fruit of hospitality and generosity. The fruit of spiritual gifts used for others. Everyone who knows the Lord has a spiritual gift. The problem is, so many of you have it all wrapped up in a neat little box and you don't even know what's inside. You haven't used it. Churches have become warehouses of spiritual gifts. Rather than opening it up and saying, okay, let's use it. Every situation that we have in this church and many situations of the community around us that could be solved by the spiritual gifts in the lives of people that are sitting right here. But it does no good if you don't open yourself up and use it. If any of you has a spiritual gift, then use it. God's given it to us. Then it says, if any of you speak, let him speak the words of God. Did you notice that it didn't say the word? It said the words. In fact, if you go back and you see what that means, it means the oracles of God. Now that sounds really fancy. But what it is saying about, it's not saying, can you throw a verse out at somebody? It's saying, do you have exactly what God wants said for that moment? If any of you speak, speak only what God wants said for that moment. Before you post on Facebook, ask yourself this question. Is this what God wants to go out from my lips? If not, keep it to yourself. Don't we all keep a lot to ourselves? We do. You say, really? Oh yeah, if this was one of those advertisements where we're all saying what we really mean, Nobody come back to church next week. Right? No, we, we, 
We are never given permission to just let it fly. Why? We are supposed to bear fruit of saying what God wants said at a particular moment. Don't be caught reacting when you should be responding according to what God wants said for the moment. And then it says, if any of you serve, if any of you are doing, be the fruit of helping others. Why? So that in everything you do, you will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Russell, what do we need to do in these last days? We'll just do those five or six things, and I think we'll all be better off. Just do these things and our world will be a better place because we were in it, because we were bearing fruit. But he didn't just say to bear fruit. He told us that we were to bear what? Much fruit. We were to bear more fruit. And to bear more fruit, God will have to prune you. Now, here's a very interesting thing. You would think that God would be concerned about those that aren't producing fruit to produce. But he says, no. Those that are producing, those that are abiding in me, those that are allowing me to to work through them, I want to improve their life so they can do it even more. They can do it even more. But to do that, he's got to come in and prune us. Now, does everybody understand what pruning is? You're going, that's what you drink when, or you eat when you... No, that's not what I was talking about. This is, this is where God comes along and he says, i got to work on you a little bit. We got, we got to take care of things a little bit. Why? Because we are to bear fruit, and bearing fruit is fine, but, but along with fruit, sometimes we get a lot of other stuff. We, we get a lot of leaves, and, and, and the leaves make it difficult for us to bear the fruit that we're supposed to bear. Oops, I removed the fruit. Not good, Russell. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Stay, oh fruit. The fruit is falling. Okay. I should have paid attention when Bev said which one to cut. But anyway. But you have to go through. I knew that was going to happen. But you go through here and and you find that as, as branches, we also produce just leaves. And, and, and even though, yes, I have eaten leaves... It's it's not the best part. The best part of this is the fruit. Nobody goes out and says, okay, I want to produce a great crop of leaves. And yet it's the leaves that look so cool, doesn't it? And you you see these branches and you see all these wonderful leaves and this is wonderful stuff. We see our accomplishments in this world and we like our accomplishments. We like those trophies for participation in other things that we do. We, we like all those awards. But you know what? That's not what impresses God. He didn't set us up to produce leaves. And so he comes in and says, I need to remove some things so that you can spend more effort in producing fruit Because fruit is what the world needs, not leaves. So many times when we really examine our life, we're just a bunch of leaves. And it withers after a little time. And then it goes away. 
But it's the fruit that God gives through us. It's what he produces there that then goes out and makes a difference. Pruning. Pruning is the removal of anything that keeps you from focusing on the vine and bearing more fruit. Every leaf along the vine, every leaf that comes out of us as branches takes away energy, space from fruit. The ideal thing would be this wonderful vine and all fruit coming out. But with the fruit, we always tend to bear leaves. God says, no, I got to come in and clean this up. I got to cut this off. I got to trim this back because then it will be stronger. It will produce more fruit. Let me tell you something about pruning. It often hurts. It often hurts. When, when God removes stuff from our life, so many times it hurts. Nobody likes to be pruned. I guarantee you, if, if, if a tree saw you coming with a pruning instrument, the tree would go, stop! And so often we whine and complain and say, God, please stop this. But he says, but, but, but I have to do it because you were designed to bear fruit, not just leaves. The interesting thing about pruning, it's, it is often not bad stuff. It's just stuff. It's not bad stuff. It's just stuff. Years ago, I remember a situation where a friend came up to me. And a friend said he was leaving. As a pastor for 40 years, I've had all kind of people leave. There's more people that are left than are still here in 40 years. But when it's a friend, it, it, it hurt a little deeper. But I remember a few years later, as I was going through this teaching and I was thinking through, all of a sudden the Lord said, you know, sometimes your friendships was what you were leaning on instead of just leaning on me. And so I had to remove not something that was bad, just something that was distracting because you were leaning on your friendship. And I don't need you to lean on a friendship. I need you to lean on me. And all of a sudden, it all made sense to me. It still hurt. It wasn't bad. And, and the person involved, I, I still have nothing against them. It's, I, I would still love the friendship, but not like it was. Why? I don't need more leaves in my life. I just want to bear fruit. The pain of the pruning is something that we know we don't deserve and has nothing to do with our personal behavior. See, when, when stuff starts going bad for you, the first thing we should all do is stop and say, God, am I doing something wrong here? Am I doing something? Is there something I'm doing that I need to change? We need to ask that. David said, examine me. And we should say to the Lord, examine me. But what happens in a moment like this, when we are being pruned, is that during that time, it comes without explanation from God. In other words, he says, nothing. Nothing. Lord, show me what I'm doing wrong. And the answer is nothing. And it is precisely that silence that lets us know God's pruning. God's pruning. 
me ask you something. Have you ever sought God more when you got sick? Anybody been through that? You get sick and all of a sudden we look to God. So maybe the taking away of our health could be part of the pruning process to get us to bear more fruit. Have you ever had a job, a sport, a friend, a situation, a a thing that that, that you you really liked and it was so good and and all of a sudden God said, this is getting to be a distraction to you doing what I can, so let me remove it. Maybe it was stolen. Now you don't have any more. Maybe, maybe something happened. Maybe your ability to, to do it was gone. What happened? I don't know. But God says, I don't want anything that distracts between you and me and bearing fruit. Because I need you to bear fruit in this world for me. Pruning helps us to understand that the goal is not to accumulate stuff. It's to begin each day at zero, depending completely on the vine. It's like when when God gave the children of Israel manna, and he said, okay, now, every day when you wake up and you come out, you're going to need exactly what you need. Go out and get just enough manna for you and your family for today. I'll be back tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just take care of today. So the first day they have manna, what do they do? They go get all the manna they can get. I mean, we got free bread today. Let's get it in the house. And they cook it and they eat it and it's good and they pig out. And they get sick and they have leftover. And the next day, it was gross. There were worms everywhere. And Moses said, did you not hear what God said? He said, go out every day. You start with zero. And you open the tent and see what God has for that day. That day. Some of you sitting here today are worried about next Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Guess what? God said, don't worry about that. Wake up tomorrow and say, give us this day our daily bread. I've got this appointment coming up. Oh, this appointment coming up. Don't worry about this appointment coming up. The day of the appointment, get up and say, what do you have for me today, Lord? He may have a canceled appointment. You never know. Don't worry about tomorrow, Jesus said. Tomorrow will take care of its own. You worry about today. The goal is not to accumulate. It's to begin each day at zero, depending completely. The goal is to improve, to grow in our capacity to receive and to release exactly with what he needs, with nothing to disturb us. Receive and release. Nothing getting in the way. Nothing getting in the way. If God wanted to do an amazing thing through you, Would you have to change something for him to be able to? Would something have to change? If God wanted to do something great through you, would he have to change something before you could do it? He'll prune it off. He'll remove that. He'll get that out of the way so that you can do what he wants to do. Third, it's to stay focused 
on the vine, not on ourselves, and certainly not on any of our accomplishments. See, a branch can't even say, dang, look at the leaves I produced. Because everything came from the vine. Your accomplishments may seem great right now, but by tomorrow, it may not seem like much. It says, don't lay up for yourself treasures right here. No, worry about that treasure out there, up there. Your accomplishments look good for a moment. God's fruit says it is fruit that remains. See, that is what we're aiming for. Fruit that remains. The goal is that we learn to feel God's love and find all of our satisfaction in Him. And only in him. If, if, if you had the choice to make between a bunch of leaves or a little fruit that would remain, what would you want? A lot of people like the leaves. But the leaves isn't what changes the world. It's the fruit that remains. And when we learn that no, it's what he wants for the world and he will do it through me, that's what I want more than anything else. That's when we're where we need to be. Here's a reality we will all be pruned by the vine dresser if we're truly connected to him. There's no way to escape it. I, I used to think, and this is so stupid of me, if I did everything right, everything would go all right. How many of you figured that out, that it doesn't work? Doesn't work. In fact, if you're doing everything right and you are producing fruit, God says, let me come in here and prune a few things off because I really, really want to use you to make a difference in this world. We talk that our life as branches are, are simple or should be simple. And if you and I are caring for our personal vineyards. It will be as simple as receive, rejoice, and release. Now, we've been saying this around here for years. If you're new and it's, it's new to you, let, let me help you. Put your hands out, everybody together. Let's help the new ones out. Receive, repeat. Receive, I thought you were gonna say repeat. Receive. Rejoice, Rejoice. Release. release. That's it. That's life. Amen. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm going to receive. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to release. Everything else is just leaves. I'm going to receive. I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to release. That, that's, that's what it's all about. That's the simplicity of life. It's just saying every morning... Okay, Lord, I am here. Now give me what I need for today. Just give me what I need. Only he knows all the people you're going to run into tomorrow. Only he knows the situations you're going to face. Only he knows the people that are going to cross your paths and the needs that they have. You have no idea. It would scare you to death if you really knew what was going to happen. But he knows. And he says, I'll give you just what you need today. I may not answer your question about Wednesday, but I can give you Monday what you need Monday. 
And when he does, please rejoice. That is worship. It is rejoicing in the fact that I, as his branch, have remained in him. I abide in him. How do I know that? Because today I received from him. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you knew that you had received something from God directly? And you, you knew it. This is from the Lord. Oh, I remember four years ago. That's a terrible waste of four years. It should have been this morning. It's already past noon. You should have already heard from the creator and sustainer of the universe. He should have already met with you. You should have already come to him and say, God... I don't know who I'm going to run into at church today, but some of them, there's a lot of sin, and I need a lot of love to cover the multitude of sin when we all get together. Lord, give me something. Give me something so that I can be who you need me to be in church today. And tomorrow at work I'll never forget one day I'm driving and I get a call from someone here at the church your wife has just cut her leg with a machete now to some of you you go how did that happen I'm used to those calls trust me your wife cut her leg with a machete okay so we get here by 911, they've come, they've checked, they've done. People here already, everything's fine. Go to the hospital. We got to get stitches. Hello, Mr. Johnson. How are you and your wife doing again? No, not quite that bad, but <laughs> there we were. So we're sitting there, and it's taking forever. Any of you said forever in emergency? It's like they missed the word emergency. Like they missed the whole point. And so you're sitting there and you're just looking around. You, you can see all the communicable diseases ganging up on you as they're coming your way. And we're just sitting there. What is taking so long? And then somebody from church comes by being wheeled into another room. And I go, wait a minute. You know, they would never would have called us and said, hey, meet us at emergency. But somehow God knew that they were going to be there that day. And so he said, I need a volunteer. Bev, you'll do. Whack! So that you could be there. Just to bear fruit for him. At the end of the day, what was the biggest deal about that day it wasn't the fact that Bev cut herself that that's normal <laughs> it was the fact that God could bear fruit through you that's the best feeling in the world and he wants you and I to have the best feeling every day so that at the end of the day we know my life on this earth was not wasted today it was not just a bunch of leaves there was fruit I receive I rejoice in whatever situation I'm in so that I can then release let's pray Lord, I come before you today. Lord, our world needs to see a whole bunch of people who are connected daily to the vine that will bear the fruit that he once delivered to this world. 
Lord, our world is a mess. It needs you. And for it to see you, to feel you, to hear you, we as branches have to abide in you, have to receive from you daily so that we really have fruit to give others. Lord, you tell us in John 15, 5, that without you, we can do nothing. Lord, what a waste of life to try to live a single day without you. What a waste if at the end of every day all we can point back to is leaves and fluff and stuff and we cannot see your hand, your fruit. Lord, I pray that you would help us take this very simple teaching that we focused on the last five weeks and live it. Lord, it, it truly can transform the way each of us live each day. And that's what we want, is that tomorrow we may be better conduits of your fruit for the world we live in. And we'll thank you for it all in your precious name. Amen.